All right guys, so today we're gonna change the front and rear diff fluid on my 2020 L5P. I just put it up on my Rhino ramps. I'll show a two degree angle because I only did the ones in front. Let's see, 1,325 hours truck has 52,044 miles. I was supposed to do this at 45,000 and I forgot. So we're gonna take care of the diffs ourselves because we got the Amsoil 7590 Severe Gear and we're gonna go ahead and let the dealer take care of the transmission and the transfer case tomorrow as uh, looks like a pain in the ass to do the transmission and the transfer case fill plug is right in front of a cross member. So because of that, I'm just gonna go ahead and let them deal with it. Um, so let's get started. All right, so there's not a lot of room in my garage. I put the front wheels on um, rhino ramps. Rear is on the ground. I got the parking brakes set. And this is on a flat surface anyway. So if you look at it, they are level. And these are supposed to be rated for something like 16,000 pounds or something crazy like that. So it gives me an extra six and a half inches of clearance without having to break out the jack and find a lift point put the jack stands underneath it so um, you know they're pretty handy so to get to the front diff here I'm gonna have to remove that front splash guard which is plastic and then that metal skid plate and as you can see it's only just a few bolts and I can get to that front diff um, pretty easily so um, today we're using where is it 7590 severe gear from Amsoil they come in these um, flexible packages, which are nice because you can get them up in there, unlike a bottle, and squeeze the stuff into the diff without worrying about tipping the bottle high enough to get all the product out. And I have to look at it, but I believe the front uses 1.8 quarts and the rear uses 4.4. I'm just gonna go until it comes out the fill plug. And put the cap in at that point because that should be good enough front and back from what I'm told. So let's go ahead and uh, get the tools out and get started. All right guys, so under here there are uh, six 15 millimeter bolts, two in the front of the splash guard, two that go through the front uh, back of the splash guard in front of the skid plate, and then two more on the back side. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the 3 8 ratchet starting from the back. See if I can get this on camera. Okay. There we go. There's one there. So pretty simple to get to. All right, so the skid plate's out there. I actually don't have to take the splash guard off, so I'm gonna leave it there. So really, guys, all I need to do is take out the four that hold the skid plate. Now you can see the front of the differential here. It's pretty easy to get to. So there is a 3 8 uh, square fill plug right there, and then there's a 3 8 drain plug right here. So normally you wanna take the top out first so that it can breathe and then you pull out the bottom so it can uh, drain without restriction. Obviously, there's a magnet on that drain plug. You're gonna wanna clean that, uh, which we'll do here in a second. All right, guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do like I said here and pull the fill plug out first. It's not in there very tight. Just need a 3 8 to break it loose, and you can get it with your fingers. No, well, maybe not. Let me try that again. It is loose, it's just, I uh, might have thread locker on it. I'm not really sure. Of course, it's right there next to the pitman arm, which doesn't make it easy. I have to use this thing to take it all the way out. Of course, if you have a uh, electric ratchet, that's easier. So now that's out, or loose enough, I can pull it out with my finger. And that has a magnet, I believe. I don't see anything on it, if it is a magnet. So let's go ahead and break this bottom one loose. See what this uh, fluid looks like. I don't use the truck in four wheel drive all the time, but every time I go up north, I use it, which is probably five times a year, five or six times a year. 
for three, four, five days at a time, which means, you know, I might use the four wheel drive uh, 30, 40 times a year. Not for many miles, maybe four miles at a time. But uh, nonetheless, it gets used and I use it at the boat ramp as well. So maybe 50 times a year. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right. So the fluid doesn't look too bad. It's nice and gold. Of course, it's got almost 52,000 miles on it. And um, here's, let me see if this magnet's got anything. A little bit. But again, guys, I'm like 7,000 miles past the drain period or the fill period. So I'm surprised it doesn't look worse. So we'll go ahead and get this magnet cleaned off and um, we'll put the drain plug back in. All right, guys, so now I've got the uh, drain plug put back in. The fill plug is out. I've cleaned them both. Here's the fill plug. The magnet is clean now. It had very little debris on it. Um, same for the drain plug. It had a little bit more, but just not too bad for 52,000 miles and as much as I've used the four-wheel drive system. So, um, again, I also leave this truck in two-wheel drive high, not auto. When you're in auto, it spins the front um, axles, which means that front gear is locked in and the transmission or the transfer case is what goes in and out. So you'd probably have more stuff if you left it in auto. Anyway, so again, I believe it takes 1.8 quarts. You should check that for yourself, but 1.8 quarts in the front. So I'm just gonna put two in or until it comes out the drain hole. I am at a bit of an angle here, as you can see, I'm at a two degree angle with the truck. So I'm just probably gonna end up putting the entire two in, call it good. Um, so with these easy packs, you have to take the caps off and then there's like a white, uh, uh, you know, film thing on there, which is hard to get off, so I had to use a knife. And then after that, you screw the thing back on, and I used some uh, tin snips to cut the nozzle off, otherwise it looks like this. And obviously, you can't put it in when it's closed. So you gotta cut it and remove the film. So now we're ready to put um, the fluid into the diff, but I can't hold the camera and do that at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and find a spot where I can balance this thing. And uh, maybe you can see it, otherwise you'll have to take my word for it. All right guys, so hopefully you can see what's going on here. So I just set my iPhone down against a paper towel holder. Okay. All right, so without spilling anything, let's see if I can get this thing in here. stick my finger in there and see if I can feel it take my glove off yeah that's definitely full and because this is an angle I'm just gonna trust that that is a uh, hundred percent and if I was to bring the truck down to level that it would probably flow out so we'll go ahead and call that good get that plug back in there Okay, just, there we go. Just past the torque mark that they came with from the factory, so. Should be good. Last thing to do here is wipe it down. Get all this residual oil off. All right, so we're good to go here. We're gonna go ahead and pull this drain pan out and then reinstall the skid plate. Okay, make sure you put the metal skid plate underneath the plastic splash guard. And then you're gonna hold it up here by getting one of these back bolts uh, started.
All right, guys, so we're gonna do the rear differential. Uh, I believe it takes 4.4 quarts. That's a, at least according to Banks power. So I got five packs already cut and opened. And the truck now, as you can see, the front tires are on level ground. So this should be pretty damn accurate, but this is the rear stock diff cover. Um, there's obviously a drain, uh, fill plug right there. There's a drain plug on the bottom of the housing. And so you don't have to take the cover itself off. The new Banks uh, cover uh, is pretty cool, but um, I don't really like the way it looks. So I'm gonna leave the stock cover on here. I thought really hard about changing it and decided not to just because I don't like the little scoops hanging down below um, the housing. I also looked at the PPE, uh, Pacific Performance Engineering cover, um, but I think doing a cover nowadays, um, while the Banks is functional, it draws your eye away from the rest of the truck, which I don't like. So. In this case, we're just gonna do a stock refill. Uh, again, I believe it's 4.4 quarts, so the first thing you're gonna use is a 3 8 ratchet, which is the only two tool you need for the rear. And I'm gonna take the fill plug out first, and then we'll remove the drain plug. So here we go, we got the 3 8 Let's see, this is a little bit tighter than the front. This is an 11 and a half inch rear gear. There we go. The front is a nine and a quarter, I believe. Got that broke loose. There's nothing. Maybe. Okay. So there you can see a little bit of stuff on the magnet, but not too bad. Again, that's the fill, not the drain. So we're gonna go ahead and clean that up here. pretty black. I've done quite a bit of towing with this truck. I've got a uh, 13,000 pound boat, which you've probably seen in other videos. Uh, it's 13,000 on the trailer with fuel and cargo that I keep in it. So this truck's rated for 21, I think 18.5, uh, I believe. So it's not quite the top rating, but the same rear gear on a 3,500 single rear wheel is like 21.5. So I uh, don't tow every day, but I tow probably 10 times a year. So the oil definitely gets a workout. All right, let's remove the uh, drain pan and then we'll get the drain plug out. All right, this drain plug is kind of towards the front of the housing here. Once you break it loose, Pull this pin underneath, and then use your fingers to get it the rest of the way out. I haven't driven the truck really today, so the fluid should not be hot. It should be ambient. And I don't know if you can see that color, but the fluid is pretty dark. Not terrible. It's still translucent, but it is definitely not the gold color that it comes from, you know, out of the bottle as, which is to be expected. So that's the drain plug. A little bit on the magnet, not too bad. I'm pretty surprised. I thought there'd be more because I have not changed this at all. This is the fluid that came from the factory, from GM. And so therefore the rear end break-in process, everything has been on this fluid. Now it doesn't smell burnt, but it doesn't smell great either. And uh, so, again, we're a little bit late on our change, but we're going to a full synthetic from Amsoil, which theoretically should go more than 45,000 miles. All right, this is done draining, so I can go ahead and get this uh, drain bolt back in. Now here, there's probably a torque rating. Again, I'm just gonna go ahead and Snug it up. It is steel and it is a thick housing, so you shouldn't have to worry about stripping anything. Don't use an impact on it. All right. So we are done draining and we are ready to fill. I've already got my um, five quarts open, so we'll go ahead and get the filling. And you want to cut this nozzle as long as you can so that it all goes in. All 
And this should be the last bag here, quart number five. It should take about half of this bag. Took a little less than four and a half. And, you know, plus or minus an ounce or two is not gonna make a difference. There's definitely a fudge factor in this fill capacity. Nice thing with the Banks cover though is it does have a, it does have a sight glass on it. So it's easy to see when it's full between services all right guys that's it so we just did the front rear diffs um, appreciate you guys watching make sure you like subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications on when i post new videos see you next time